All right. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, I guess if you follow the Western calendar or whatever. Um, I thought it would be fun to just jump in and kind of take stock on the vocal chain that I'm using right now. Uh, I have made a few tweaks to it over the last couple of weeks, and I feel like I've got it pretty dialed in. I thought it'd be fun to share um, and also kind of see how things change uh, in about a year's time, you know, just sort of check in, do another video uh, for 2023. Oh my God, I don't want to think of another year later than 2022, but <laughs> there we go. So I have a session. Uh, this is a song uh, called Nine Days that Pierre and I are done recording. I'm just taking a little space from it to reset my my brain for the for the final mix. But then I'm just going to focus on just my vocal here. I'm, I'm not going to expose Pierre's uh, vocal this time around. Try to Try to keep this democratic, you know. I soloed his vocal with no effects on Drive With Me, so let's do my vocal for nine days. The setup that I have here right now is I have all the effects are bypassed, and then I have the uh, lead vocal bus, those effects also bypassed. Uh, if I right click on the volume knob here, my sends to reverbs, delays, etc., are all muted. So this is just totally raw. Feeling love in a foreign land. And that's kind of like the little thesis of the song, feeling love in a foreign land. So typically one thing that I do is I will mix, like work on the sound of my vocals with some part of the song in, but not all of the song. So with vocals, typically I'm going to be using the bass and the kick to kind of give me an idea of where the low end is at. And then, you know, the hi-hats are also some of the more uh, trebly parts of the mix. So the generally the drum bus gives me the best thing to mix the vocals against, you know, but in this case, I will make sure that I'm keeping the vocal fairly soloed so that you can hear what each step uh, is doing. So let's get let's get straight into this. Um, so the first effect I have is sugar. This is a harmonic satur or harmonic exciter slash saturator. Uh, it has four bands and you can kind of see I'm sort of, you know, just as I go up the spectrum, I am exciting or saturating uh, the signal a bit more. You know, if I listen to this track on its own, feeling love in a fall. it's definitely like it's muffled. It I want a lot more brightness. I want airiness out of that. Um, it sounds like I was kind of singing it. You know, maybe I could have maybe been a little bit closer to the mic. You know, I know I can bring that air out, so I'm not going to, going to obsess over like singing as close as I can, you know, because then you're going to deal with a lot of harshness and stuff. Anyway, so I've got this kind of like muffled vocal. And so I use sugar to, to kind of just get the vocal to sort of like where I would want it after recording. Feeling love in a foreign land. So without. Feeling love in a. With. Feeling love in a foreign land. So I'm really just, you know, I'm kind of trying to trying to reverse the problems. It's a little muffled and boomy sounding. So I'm just bringing out a lot of, you know, air and top end with this and even a little uh, mid range. It has kind of a nice, you know, it just kind of pushes the mid range a little bit more forward um, in a way that doesn't seem to bring out like room tones and, and undesirable things. Super cool plugin. Um, the saturation is pretty nice. You know, you, you can like, I can take some, some like cheap mic, like an SM57 or something. And with the air band, I can make it sound almost like a condenser, you know, like, I'll mess with these parameters real quick here. Feeling love in a foreign land, feeling love in a foreign land. So that hot, the high band here can get dangerous real quick. You know, it's just nice that I can just throw this plug in on and know that I'm kind of starting with those types of qualities on the vocal already in play. And so I'm just building on top of that. So after sugar, I have a saturator. So this is kind of a second level of saturation. So I use sugar to bring out all the top end and air and I'm using PSP saturator, mostly for some low end body um, and just general saturation, you know, just saturation also acts as compression. So this is kind of, you know, again, kind of keeping that vocal pinned forward uh, and bringing out some excitement. The main thing here though, is taking that mix down to 30%. So it's not extreme. It's not super dramatic sounding. Um, let's see. So without feeling love in a foreign land, feeling love in a foreign land, you know, subtle, but 
I think it's definitely helping kind of bring out some of that presence from sugar, and, but keeping it a little bit more locked and actually sort of softening the sound. I think that's what I'm using this softness here for. Uh, there was some sort of sibilance harshness coming through, and this seems to pull that back on the saturation. Whereas the low, the warmth feels like you're pushing low end into the saturator. Not exactly sure what they do. I just go by my ears, you know. In this case, I wanted to add a little bit more body to my vocal. So I'm using warm tape, which is a little more bass focused. Uh, something like modern tape will bring out a little bit more sparkle. Then I have my compressor. So this is something that will change depending on the vocal. Uh, I think this, this compressor sounds really good on my voice. I don't like it on Pierre's voice, so on his chain, I'm using the PSP FET presser, which is kind of like a sort of transparent 1176 style. You get the sort of the that FET action on the attack and release, uh, but this plugin to me doesn't really saturate as much as a lot of the 1176 uh, emulators do. It seems to kind of soften uh, the top end without making it sound dull or muffled. If I want something to be a little bit more aggressive or in your face, I might use something like the glue. So I have a variety of compressors kind of in mind that you know, oh, I want, you know, I'm looking for this sound. I know I can just bring that compressor up. So let's throw the tube tech on. Feeling love in a foreign, feeling love in, feeling love in a foreign land. Subtle again, but it's just, it is bringing a little bit of sparkle, a little bit of presence in there. Um, and then it's really, it's not doing a whole lot of compression and it's really just kind of hitting it on this, this love and Maybe that's four, and I think the 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 O vowels are are louder than other ones. Feeling love in a foreign land. So the idea with these first three plugins that I like, I kind of have in mind, and again, I I may where the compressor is may change. You know, I could I could totally have the compressor be after this this the EQ that I'm going to talk about. But in this case, I I think it's nice to you know use sugar maybe a saturator and a compressor to really just take that natural raw vocal sound that was recorded and get it as close as you can to where you want as far as level and and compression and you know top end and all that so i'm kind of getting the natural raw sound as uh sort of polished up as I can, and then now it's like, okay, let's actually do all the shaping and get the stuff out of there that I don't need and all that. But but really it just allows something like the PSP saturator and sugar to work on the raw signal. So they're not working on already highly processed stuff. I don't know, it just it just feels more natural to do like your your heavier compression and saturation on that like raw signal. So uh, I have two EQs. I like to mentally separate them. This first one here is you know, a little bit more of a standard EQ curve you might expect, rolling off some low end I don't need, taking out a little mid range, making a presence uh, presence bump here, and there was a, like some extra harshness in the top that I that I was gonna take out. So this feeling love in a foreign land, feeling love in a foreign land. So pretty subtle, but just a little shaping, and then it comes into the big deal EQ. This is the thing that I added basically most recently. I, I got one of the ma Mixed with the Masters courses, uh, Jason Joshua. He was working on a Rosalia song and this was the vocal EQ, or it wasn't you know this exactly, but this was the vocal EQ technique he used and it really kind of blew my mind. How do like pop vocals have this like super clear top end and like all the mid range just is like super controlled, but it's still clear like i can still hear everything and i think a lot of it comes down to this ex like really broad natural eq moves that sort of create like a a hierarchy on your on your vocal you know i'm sort of taking the top top and i'm just like trying to touch it as little as possible i'm saying everything below this just bring it back like let that top end hang out everything else just come down and then even more, I'm doing another very gradual shelf, but it's more close to where the telephone part of your voice is, the telephonic part, the body of your voice. And I want to bring that down a little bit more in relation to the top top and the presence. So I'm kind of saying, you know, don't touch this, the presence, bring that down a little bit, the telephone part, bring that down even more. And then I'm doing, a, you know, a couple more specific mid-range moves um just areas that we're building up but then i'm also doing a little bump on the on the bass like just it's 
not even really that audible, but it's just something you kind of feel. Uh, you know, you just feel the vocals a little bit more closer, uh, or a little closer, a little more natural feeling. Um, one thing to keep in mind with this is that I am, you know, taking a majority of the level down by three decibels or so. So it's going to get quieter, uh, and I make up for that later in the chain. Um, feeling love in a foreign land. Feeling love in a foreign land. So with it in, it just sounds kind of like the same, but quieter. But if you pay attention to the top end of the vocal, it's really not really being a, a affected at all. And so it's just kind of, it's a relative move, right? I'm, I'm taking a lot of stuff away, but what's staying stays at the same level. I don't, I, you know, I'm not sure how else to word that. Feeling love in a foreign land. If there's one thing to take away, if this EQ looks crazy to you, I would try to figure it out. Uh, I'm then doing multiband compression. This compressor is sort of doing the same thing that the previous EQ uh, was doing, but it's just doing it in a more it's doing it in a dynamic way. Feeling love in a foreign land. Feeling love in a foreign land. Feeling love in a foreign land. It's really doing most of the work at the top. So I think at this point, like I've got a lot of the low end and the mid range pretty well controlled. So what this is doing is really just kind of making sure that that sort of reedy, readiness, that presence, uh, and also the top end of my voice are, are sort of balanced in relation to each other. A big thing that I'm doing here is I'm taking the top top, you know, which is the air, but it can also be harsh. It can be sibilance. It can be... T's and C's and K's and stuff. The, so the main thing here is that the attack and release are at the fastest they possibly can be. But then I'm boosting the overall band by three decibels. So I'm using this to catch harsh transients in this region of the sound, which will help smooth out the sound of those, those transients. It'll help make them not poke your ears. Uh, but then I'm overall boosting the level. So I'm helping reduce harshness so that I can increase the level, <laughs> which is a thing. And then this is where I make up the level <laughs> for the most part. Um, Parallel Voices. This is a plugin I got, I want to say maybe over like Black Friday air, uh, time. There was a sale, I believe. I think I got it for $20. It might be $30. I would, to me, it's, it's worth it. Um, the idea is that it is a parallel compressor for vocals. You don't have to manually do that. You don't have to duplicate a track or set and create a new track and do a send or whatever. It's just, you want that parallel compressed vocal sound? Here it is. These these controls are very, you know, they, they definitely matter. Mail 2 is it works with Pierre. Mail 1 does not, whereas the opposite is true for my vocal. Mail 1 is where I go. Uh, the group setting is really nice if you have, you know, a bunch of stereo groups or, you know, just stacks of vocals. So male one, um, I have the fast response time. So this is kind of simulating the attack release on your parallel compressor. Uh, so I want this vocal, I want the vocals on this song to be fairly like in your face sounding. So I'm using a fast uh, attack release to just kind of give it that like aggression, like the compress. you can kind of hear the compressor grabbing. Feeling love in a foreign land. Feeling love in a foreign land. So it's definitely bringing some signal up, which is intentional. I'm I am using this to help me boost some level, but I feel like you also get more, like the the Fs, the air around the F is like really jumping out more because of the compressor uh, response time. It's helping push the vocal forward, uh, and it's making certain elements kind of come out a little bit better. And then everyone's favorite OTT. Uh, I like how I save between every everything I do, I hit save. It's like built into my body. So OTT, I'm doing a fairly, you know, it's a fairly conservative setting, 20% depth, 20% on the upward downward. This is just sort of my default setting uh, because the default default with everything at a hundred is just crazy. You know, it's like completely unusable. One thing that I do like about Reaper, I'm sure other DAWs do this too, is if I have a setting that I always like want a plugin to start with and the plugin itself doesn't have a feature like that built in, um, I can hit the plus sign here and do save preset as default. Little things like that just help speed up the process. You know, if I want to throw OTT on it, I know that I can just load it up and it's going to be close to where I want it instead of 
some crazy setting that I need to pull back. I kind of want to, so parallel voices and OTT are kind of doing the same thing. They just do it in a, diff a different way. Let's just hear what OTT does. Feeling love in a foreign land. So OTT is way more focused on that like top end presence and readiness, I feel like. Whereas parallel voices Feeling love in a foreign land. is a little bit more of the body of the vocal and it's, but it's doing kind of the same thing where it's really just pushing that forward. So then together, I feel like they sort of do a complete version, like, you know, OTT is kind of covering the top end, parallel voices covering the bottom end, and together they just push the vocal forward in a really great way. Uh, let's bring some music in because this is... <laughs> Feeling love in a foreign land Just off the flight So without Feeling love in a foreign land You know, you could just say it's turning up the vocals, but it's definitely It is, in a, but it's also adding It's definitely adding a lot of tone and character to the vocal Next up is kind of my 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 final EQ my, my character EQ, I guess Musical EQ This is the PSP Noble QX I guess, Q Noble Kex and Quex, I don't know, <laughs> but has a really nice little tube saturation circuit. So I'm saturating uh, again. <laughs> uh, I am doing a boost around 4K. I am doing a cut around 250 hertz, doing a little boost around 100 hertz. And that appears to be it. I'm also doing a little bit of a level boost. Feeling love in a foreign land. So I definitely feel that low end boost. Yeah, I don't really hear it, but I can kind of feel the vocal get a little bigger sounding and a little closer. You know, I'm boosting this. Feeling love in a foreign land. So again, yeah, so so the 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 noble Q is is mostly just giving me that 4K boost. Like that's the kind of the main thing it's doing, but it's also a little bit of low end to help make that vocal feel a little closer to you. Then we kind of get into some of the cleanup, you know. There's definitely some bad things that, that, that can build up after all this compression, saturation, etc. Uh, I'm using the dynamic EQ to negative 9 dB, a 20 Q. So it's, you know, it's, this is pretty surgical stuff, but Pro-Q is, is good at that. You know, it's nice that it's not really doing anything to the signal unless it needs to. Feeling love in a foreign land. So if I just solo each one. Feeling... That's like kind of a weird re room resonance. Feeling so on that, oh, that full foreign land. You know, it's like catching that resonance there. More resonance. You know, I could definitely use a tool like Soothe to kind of achieve the same thing. But I do think that you know, certain vocals definitely will have some pretty specific resonances. I think it's worth at least trying to address a couple in a very, like, specific way. Feeling love in a foreign land. Feeling love in a foreign land. So that really cleans the low end. Like, that that sort of 200 hertz woofiness is now getting, like, really taken away when, it's, when it needs to. It's not a huge amount of information that it's taking out. But I think it just cleans up the overall sound a lot. DSing, pretty straightforward. Feeling love in a foreign land. And then these effects are sort of more special effect things. So I'm using micro shift. I actually have the micro shift kick in for this part. The vo Pierre's vocal comes in here, so mine becomes a little bit more of a background vocal. Land, just off the flight, flickering lights. So it just pushes it stereo, gets it out of the way, so that Pierre's vocal can be can be in the middle. Uh, this is what I this is a plugin I use a lot for just like doing volume pumping. So I've got it synced to a quarter note, you know, doing some pumping, and then Alter Boy, I think, comes in at the end of the song or something. So after the channel, I'm going to the lead vocals uh, folder here. So this is where I'm doing kind of more of that like, you know, the more modern cleanup stuff. <laughs> so soothe. You know, it's a, you can find so many videos talking about how amazing this, this plugin is. So I'm really, you know, taking that 4K boost, you know, I'm just using this to help control that, help tame it if it gets too harsh. Um, the attack on Soothe is fast, so I'm using this to also help DS the vocals overall. And then I guess there was, you know, a little bit of a sort of mid-range thing. 
Uh, I do love that you can do the delta on on soothe, so you can kind of hear what it's taking out. Feeling love in a land. So that to me might it might be kind of taking a little bit too much out. So I'll sometimes just like pull the mix down a little bit because there there is elements of that sound that I'm taking away that I still feel like I want. Feeling love in a foreign land. Feeling love in a foreign land. Yeah, even that 10%, like that's a big that's a big difference. Like just a little bit of that extra buzz and sort of distortion and air uh, is coming through now, but it's not getting harsh. So that's cool. Golfos, one of my one of my favorites. Um, subtle, 8% tame, 6% uh, recover. This is also a really great way that if you just need to brighten or darken something in a very natural way that doesn't sound like you've rolled stuff off and made it muffled sounding, super great. So Golf Foss. Feeling love in a foreign land. Feeling love in a foreign land. Like just low mid, low mid magic. It's just cleaning up the mids, making it so much clearer sounding to me. And then I'm doing a touch of compression. This is really just to help control the level when Pierre and I are singing at the same time. Feeling love in Yeah, so it's like barely touching it. Then we got some airy Q, everyone's favorite. Feeling love in a foreign land. So like barely touching it, 0.67 decibels. Feeling love in a foreign land. You know, it can get definitely get dangerous fast, especially with all the saturation and other other effects I've been doing on the on the channel. But that's overall like what I'm doing with lead vocals. So as far as effects go. These are kind of my, my effects sends here. I'm going to focus on just the Vox effects and the, sh uh, the short lead. Feeling love in a foreign land. Just off the flight, flickering lights. And this is a surprise that I ended up using this plugin, I thought. Um, but I've really, I've really grown to like it for this purpose. Um, the Dirty Spring from Bedroom Producers blog uh, is free. So definitely recommend grabbing it. I like that you can kick it. <laughs> it's like simulating if you actually hit like the, the the reverb tank on a spring reverb you can add like distortion and stuff to make or dirt which to me is just kind of like digital <laughs> it's like a variety of bit crushing really so i have the short reverb and then my like my longer like my plate verb that's like where like the backup vocals are going to be going so the so the the backgrounds will will sort of fill in that extra like more special effect reverb this is like ideally if i bring the rest of the you know the drums and stuff feeling love in a foreign land just off the flight flickering lights then your life got you know it's not really dramatic but it's definitely there i, I don't know i feel like it just fits into a mix super well i'm i'm very pleasantly surprised with uh, Dirty Spring. So then the next one is Vox Effects. This is another pretty, pretty standard thing. So Valhalla Ubermod, one of my favorite uh, choruses. You can get a little, you know, you can definitely get in the weeds with this. And so I do like using their, what is it, space modulator. Um, if I just need to throw some simple chorus, flange, phaser on something, I'll use that. This one's free. It's great. Uh, Ubermod is nice because I just feel like you can you can dial it a little little bit better. And so if I'm using this as my vocal chorus, I want that control. I want to be able to make sure it's really clean and precise. These two effects are something I don't typically do, but I'm gonna. Uh, so I want to show this again. This is my init. So this is this is when I load this plugin in. This is what it does because it's specifically. I mean, I almost only use it on the Vox effects. Um, I'll sometimes use it on bass uh, bass guitar. It's really nice for that because I can go to the EQ and I can just have it not affect the low end and just hit, you know, the sort of mid range of the, of the bass and, and kind of give that a nice stereo spread. Let's just listen to the vocal with the Vox effects. Just off the flight, flickering lights, then your laugh cut through the room. Uh, so for this song, I just, I felt like I wanted to give the Vox effects a little bit of its own sound. I think I just downloaded uh, this magic dice thing from baby audio for free. You know, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna try that out. Uh, I think I'm using it. It's a pretty subtle addition. Feeling love in a foreign land. It's like a very small, like short little room reverb that's mixed in with the Uber mod. 
So it gives it a little length. So whereas that's like right up front and just like it's just a chorus, this pushes it a little bit back and gives it depth. And then I'm using beef to bit crush. Uh, love this distortion plugin. I don't know. It, it just it's it is a way to help something kind of cut through the mix in a different way. It doesn't always work. Uh, something that I something that I th I think is is not super common, but does this happen a lot is bit crushing uh, vocal. Uh, so definitely something that I I think I hear on on rap vocals a lot is this. So you can kind of bit crush it to 15 bit or something, right? So let's uh, let's take these effects off again. Feeling love in a foreign land. Just off. So that's with the beef. Feeling love in a foreign land. So it's interesting. It translates as if the vocal is kind of distorted, but it's really just truncating information off of the signal. <laughs> so I don't know. It, it's kind of interesting. Um, the re I, I really like this effect on, on my voice specifically. My voice definitely has that readiness and that buzz, and this helps emphasize that. Uh, for this song specifically, the, Pierre and I are singing a lot together, and I felt like this was adding kind of a hashiness or a, a ch -ch -ch kind of sound to my voice that just was making kind of distracting away from Pierre's. So in this case, I was like, well, we'll keep my voice a little cleaner. Feeling love in you know, relatively speaking. <laughs> so that's, you know, that's, that's kind of the basic sound that we're working with. Super happy with where we got our vocals at this point. I love this vocal chain is really working for me. It's, it's not always how I'm going to approach vocals. There's another song that we're working on where the singer's voice was just like, it doesn't ha it didn't have all these like, you know, certain vowel sh shapes were pushing the mid range, whereas other vowel shapes were pushing another range. And so there's, there's this need for a lot of these levels of control uh, and sort of leveling out and smoothing or balancing. Her voice is just, all I did was compressed it and then EQ'd it a little bit afterwards. And that's literally like it has two or three plugins. Yeah, it's like I can be, I'm a 2022 producer and I've got, you know, four levels of saturation. I've got five EQs. I've got three compressors. I don't know. It's just so much compression and saturation and EQ going on. It's 2022. I mean, we got crazy computers. Why not? Right. So anyway, that's, that's, uh, you know, that's, I, I'm, let's see, I'm running out of like 45 minutes on this recording. So uh, not necessarily as fast as I was anticipating. The path to, to sort of finding this vocal chain has has been a pursuit of a sound I hear in my head or a sound that I'm attracted to in other music that I hear. But that one EQ thing was like, oh my God, that that like unlocked this, this problem I was trying to solve and I just didn't think of using an EQ that way. So in the same way, I hope that this video, you know, maybe has like one or two ideas that just makes, just inspires you. Excited to re release this song, excited to run through the production breakdown for this song. Uh, there's a lot of fun things that we've learned. I think, uh, I think that does it. I wish your vocal chains um, the, the happiest of new years. Thanks a lot. This was fun. And I'll see you in the next video. Then your life got through the room My first night